Oh, that's really good, God. Thanks. Been playing the flute for 200 years now. And it shows. Here, give it a try. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. Why not? I I've never played before. So what? I, I can't follow God. But why? I would look silly. I promise I won't laugh. No, no, that's okay. Just do it! Okay, fine. Jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation. God, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? What, what do you mean? You're punishing children to the third and fourth generations because of the sins of their parents? What? No. Yes, you are. It says so in Deuteronomy, Exodus, and Numbers. And in Hosea, it's talking about you giving women miscarriages just because you got triggered? What's all that about? It says you're doing this because you're jealous? It's because of you, okay? I, I got kind of jealous about how good you play the flute, so I... How well I play the flute. Yeah, how well you play the flute. And since you look like a little kid, I... Huh, I guess I kind of got carried away and started lashing out at all the little brats. But I thought it's because you were jealous of the other gods. What other gods? You tell me. The Bible says you're jealous of them. Listen, God, you have to promise me that you'll stop punishing children for the things their parents do, okay? That's not fair. It's not their fault. Fine, fine. I'll stick something in Deuteronomy and... And Ezekiel, I guess. Okay, good. What are you going to put in there? Oh, um, well, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16, let's say, uh, parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. That's it? Just the one verse? Okay, let's give an example of it being used, so refer to it in, say, 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 6, and 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 4. Got it. Okay, that's good, three verses, but we need to cover things other than the death penalty, too. Okay, so in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, I'll say... The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. How's that? Okay, that's all well and good, but... Won't people see that those verses directly contradict with all those other verses that say you do punish children for the sins of their parents? No, because I'm the one punishing children for the sins of their parents. But in the law, I'm saying not to do that, you see. And you don't have to follow your own laws? Nope. But doesn't not following your laws count as sin? And at least hypocritical? Not when I do it. Shouldn't you at least set an example? Nah, don't care. How about when you command it? What? I don't command people to sin. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 2-3, through 3, you didn't personally kill the children and infants for what their parents did, but you commanded the Israelites to kill the children and infants of the Amalekites for what their parents did directly contradicting your commandment that explicitly says not to do that. No, see, the commandments only apply to the Israelites. Yeah, that's it. Oh? 
So an Israelite is allowed to commit murder, steal, and bear false witness as long as it's against someone who was not an Israelite? No. I didn't say that, but... So there's some pretty clear contradictions here. Oh, contradictions? You think they'll care about that, do you? Well, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who be it that righteous broad jiggling about with the ripe melons and whatnot? Uh, her name is Bathsheba, sire. She is the wife of Uriah the Hittite. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, she's she's taking a bath, and her name has bath in it. <laughs> yo yo, anywho, uh, bring me that bath broad, so that I may have sexual intercourse with her, and 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 what not. But sire, she's married. Yo, did I stutter? Mm, yeah. Oh, well. Just do it anyway. <gasps> you see that? David, my chosen, wants to boink a married broad. Yep, not good. Maybe you should go down and have a chat with him to avoid any unpleasantness. You're asking me, God Almighty, to think of a problem ahead of time and develop a plan that will take that problem into consideration so that the best possible result will come to fruition? Uh, yeah. Nah, don't like it. Sire, dost thou remember that one time we engaged in clandestine fornication? I did what now? Yo, that goat had it coming. No, that time we secretly screwed. Oh, yeah. How couldst I forget? Thy melons are so ripe. Well, thou knocked me up. Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, how about this? Go sleep with thy husband so that he thinks the brat is his, and hopefully he does not request the holy ritual with the magic abortion potion if he suspects that the brat ain't his. And whatever thou do, don't confess this to Priest Maury. But, sire. Mine husband is in the field, fighting for thee. Bringest him unto me. Yo, Uriah, how thou doing, brother? Thou good? How's the fighting going? I am very well, sire, though the journey hath been long, and mine feet are a bit sore, so I gave them a bit of a rub before I... Yo, go boink thy wife. Excuse me? Thou done good. Take some time off, chill, relax, chillax, and go boink thy wife. Sire, Uriah has not gone home to boink his wife. He hath stayed with the men. Yo, didst thee not have a long joiny? Why didst thou not go home and boink thy wife? Sire, the Ark and Israel and Judah are all in tents. All the men are still in tents in the open field. Surely it would be unfair for me to chill at my crib and boink mine wife. Thou know what? Thou art a good man. Stay and drink with me one more night, and then I'll send thee back to the fighting where thou wanna be. Cool? <laughs> Yo, wouldn't boinking thy wife be great right now? Uh-huh. Boink thy wife. Yo, boink thy wife. Yo, take this letter and give it to Commander Joab, and whatever I'll do, don't 
Look at it. Yes, sire. It will be done. What does the letter say? Well, it says to put Uriah on the front line where the fighting is fiercest, and then to abandon him there so that he will be killed by the enemy. Wow, what a shitty thing to do to someone who has been so loyal and disciplined. Yep. So... You... Going to do anything about it? Nope. Just let him die? Yep. Because you don't want to interfere with free will? Jeffrey, I've been interfering with free will all throughout the Old Testament, let's face it. So, it's the God uses evil to do good excuse? Uh, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll go with that one. So, a good outcome is definitely going to come of this, right? Sure. Sire, some of the men died in battle, including Uriah the Hittite. Yo, so let me get this straight. Uriah is definitely dead. Yes, sire. Uriah is dead. Yo, time to marry Uriah's wife. Shouldn't we allow her the customary time of mourning, sire? Yeah, sure, but when thou put a bun in the oven, thou gotta set a timer. Thou know what I mean? Not exactly, no. Look, I'm just saying, a lot of time has gone by already. Can the people do, like, math and stuff? Yes, I'm sure they can, sire. Damn it. Dost thou, David, take this woman to be thy lawfully wedded- Yo, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> Yo, he's legit. We're married. Yo, I'm just a strong kisser is all. Don't do math or nothing. God, don't do it. God, calm down. Oh, David, I gave you everything. I made you king and delivered your master's house to you. I even gave you your master's wives. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But I thought marriage was supposed to be between one man and one woman. Jeffrey, just because it's in the Bible, that doesn't mean I approve of it. No, 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 no. You just said that you, God himself, gave him Saul's wives, plural. Shut up, Jeffrey. Anywho, since you have done evil, killed a man and took his wife, I am going to take your wives and let them sleep with someone close to you. Hawk. Oh god, no! Wait, don't I have free will? Don't I get a say in this? No! Not only that, but I'm gonna kill your newborn son because of what you did. What? God, no! Shut it, Jeffrey! No, please, God! Please, 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 spare my innocent son! Not only is he going to die, but I'm gonna make him sick so that he suffers greatly, and it takes him an entire week to die. God, you can't do this. This is a very bad idea. What? Why? Because you've clearly established that children should not be punished for what their parents do. It's not a good idea for you to be violating your own laws like this. Jeffrey, we already went over this. My followers won't give a shit, I'm telling you. Okay, well, they'll have to care about you torturing and killing an innocent baby, right? No. Well, why not? Because I'm God. So I must have a morally sufficient reason. Just because they don't know it. That doesn't mean I don't have a good reason. But we do know the reason. The reason is to punish David, his father, which is exactly what you said not to do. Huh. Okay. Uh... Oh, how about this one? I give life, so I have every right to take life. Bam! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Bam! Even as punishment for someone else? The child's sole purpose was to be a punishment for his father? Well, yeah. But you're supposed to be defined as good, 
perfectly good, the very source of good. Yeah, so? So how in the hell are we defining good here? If you can just do whatever the hell you want and have it be considered good by default just because you're the one who did it, then good is meaningless. I mean, if you're allowed to torture an innocent baby to death for an entire week and have that considered good, then I'm sorry, good is meaningless. By whose standard? Mine, because I think torturing babies to death is wrong. Well, how did you figure that out? Through my reasoning. How did you figure out that it's good to torture a baby to death? Oh, well... Why, it just is when I do it. No, 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 no. You said that you had a morally sufficient reason. That means you should be able to justify it through reasoning and not just a blind appeal to authority. And that means that morality itself comes from reasoning, as even God himself has to have a reason. Okay, okay. The real reason is that Jesus is going to come from David and Bathsheba's lineage. Wait. So, after condemning David's relationship with Bathsheba by punishing an innocent baby with torture and the death penalty because you don't approve of their union, you're going to not only bless their union now, but use it to bring about the savior of all mankind? Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't want Jesus to come from adultery. Wait. You mean the exact same line in which Tamar got pregnant by disguising herself as a prostitute in order to trick her father-in-law into having sex with her? Uh, yeah? So, this had to happen. Yes. It was part of your plan. Yes. And you're pissed about it. Yes. And you punished a baby for what had to happen. Yes. And you're a douchebag. Yes. I mean, no. So after their next kid is born and he inherits the kingdom, then no more punishing children for what their parents do? Well, their next kid will be Solomon and... I do punish Solomon's son for what Solomon does. You can't even kick the habit for a single generation. Look, I can't quit cold turkey, but all right, after that, I'll try to stop. No, you won't, because it's the basis for your entire system of salvation. Not only are you punishing an innocent baby for what his parent did, and Solomon's kid, and the firstborn of Egypt, and the children of the Midianites, and the children of the Amalekites, etc. But you're punishing literally everyone on Earth because of something Adam and Eve did. The OG parents. These are grotesque violations of your own standard. And I think you should have to face some accountability. You know what, Jeffrey? You convinced me. I did? Yeah, you're right. I'm guilty. I deserve to be punished. Oh, wow. It's amazing to hear you say that, God. What, what, what are you going to do? Well, naturally, since I'm a guilty parent, uh, my punishment should be for my son to be tortured and killed. What? Yeah, I mean, it's only fair. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. No, 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 no. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey. Ah, shut the fuck up. You're gonna respawn in three days anyway. Super Reverse Psychology Man, why have you called me, your arch nemesis, to join you here? Not so fast, sub -whore. I didn't. We superheroes should never unite against our common enemy. That is why we also should not call the Like Clicker, who always positively rates videos. Nor should we call the Commenter, who always posts. And lastly, we should never call the bell icon, who notifies everyone else when they are needed. Who is this deadly new foe we must unite against? Gadget. Gadget. My 
God! What is that? It's rhythm. Algo rhythm. Jeffrey, what's all this nonsense about our social media guy, Dark Matter 2525, writing books? Yeah, he's written three books so far. Two of them are published, and the third one is on the way. They're a trilogy of fantasy novels. People seem to like them a lot. But that means he's competing with our fantasy novel, The Bible. Don't worry. People don't buy his books just to give them away and stick them in hotel room drawers. So he'll likely never reach your sales numbers, Scott. Oh, good. But just to be sure, let's make sure we discourage anyone from going to Amazon and checking out his new author page. Got it. And make absolutely 100% sure that you don't put a link to his books in the description of this video. Okay. Listen up, everybody. There's no link to Dark Matter's books in the description of this video. Wait a minute. Yes, there is. What? No. No, there's not. I'm looking at it right now, you little motherfucker.